Hello, I'm Martine Rose and I'm a designer. I'm Lauren Cochran. I'm senior fashion writer at The Guardian and contributor to L, Circle 08 and Service 95. You're very much kind of in the fold of, of fashion. I mean, do you, do you feel like that? Um, yeah, no, yeah, of course I do, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, particularly like the, the last show was so kind of... Oh my God brilliant i cried my eyes out i said after that i had um i had a migraine for two days <laughs> it was so overwhelming it was so overwhelming yeah because i spent um i was just um explaining earlier we had because we use street cars there's a lot of it's it's you know it is different to using models because mm. there's a lot of it's a, it's a lot of trust it's a lot of trust because yeah. you're you're working with um people that that have never seen themselves you know they feel vulnerable they're you're putting them in you know weird stuff you know what I mean or stuff that they're certainly not used to do it wearing and mm -hmm. you know and and it's a lot it's a lot of energy that is focused on building your relationship and the trust and all of that sort of stuff and going hey, you look great and you know it's and to see that on the day it was the sort of days of in the run-up paying off they, yeah. they believe it and they're growing into it and they're you know they're starting to feel really good about themselves and all of that and I, I just kept on seeing these little moments all throughout the day and I was just wailing I was in pieces it was very moving Do you street cast different people every time we have people that we've been using for seasons and seasons uh -huh. and then there's always a new a like new oh. people that come in exactly right. yeah okay um, so tell us a bit about the kind of like the idea and the kind of sort of doing it as a kind of, I mean, would you call it a party? <laughs> would I? Well, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> One of the most stressful parties I've ever been to, but yeah, it was a party of sorts. It was, um, so the season prior we had had, it was a little bit, um, I t it, it, it touched on that, on that feeling because again we use this sort of street cast people in it and I got a real sense of it's just so rewarding to mm. to make people feel seen and uh, you know attractive and sexy or and whatever it is but you're you know and even if it's like contrary to their character it's just the transformation is amazing mm. I really I really wanted to talk about the or speak to the the transformative nature of clothes the, the fun of clothes and all of that sort of stuff and we had there was one uh street cast in particular and he he was so pumped and he got <laughs> backstage and he said I feel so good right now and everyone was so it was so like I said moving so then we had this idea that maybe isn't it a shame that they'd never get to show their own communities and their own it's you know it's one thing to do it to the industry yeah you know but we wanted that feeling of what about if they just couldn't, wouldn't it be nice if they could take it back to their own communities and show how great they look to their. So we were like, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. So we asked all of the street cast to invite their mums, dads, sisters, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, um, to come. And so they could really show off to the people that they love the most, not just tell them about it or show them pictures. Genius. So the atmosphere was like really charged because they were so excited they were excited to show their family and friends and their friends were so excited to see them it's great like it was it was really fun because that's what it's all about for you I think isn't it yeah that's sort of um how clothes make you feel exactly yeah kind of idea. you know this yeah it, uh, uh, you know there's a lightness and a playfulness and yeah it, yeah it is it is about, yeah. <laughs> and then you then you sort of took it to Paris I mean and then we took it to Paris yeah. it's the first time you've shown in yeah. Paris yeah I thought it was Thanks. yeah it was all really you know flying by the seat of our pants yeah because so, I've always thought how am I going to do it? how would I do it how am I going to do Paris? how am I going to do what I do and do it in Paris it's and you know, so there's always a thing, isn't there, about Paris? How do you do Paris for the first time? Well, that that's how we do. It. That's how we do it. Yeah, um, it was uh, yeah, very wild. I'd say. Yeah, I was very sad to miss it. Because <laughs> um, there's a, there's sometimes, or not, not always, but like 
quite often there's a sort of element of surprise about one of your shows. To all of us. <laughs> to all of us. Yeah, to be involved. Yeah, I, d- I don't know. I, yes, yeah, definitely. And it wasn't, there were so many things that um, are a consequence, a, a, surpri- a surprise consequence. So a, su- a surprise consequence of not having show um, uh, phones mm-hmm. at the London show was that actually we had a really a really engaged audience you know we actually didn't everyone was really in the room so the atmosphere was really really felt intense because there wasn't you weren't looking through something at something yeah you know it was like so you had this presence which was a, an accidental consequence you know and when we went to Paris we were like well I don't know is it just going to fall flat having people watching a video of a good time you know mm-hmm. what I mean is that not is that maybe that isn't going to work so then we were like we're going to have to we actually have to give them a good time <laughs> like, <laughs> we're, going to have to, we're going to have to do it yeah so we we're like okay let's get some of the models out at least in the video and do this sort of mini thing so it wasn't it was it was a screening mm-hmm. it was supposed to be a screening and you know l- sort of last minute we were like let's bring some of the models and so they can have a little you know like a little taste of it so it was yeah. So yeah, everyone was like this sort of surprise screening that was just a surprise show. It was actually, it was just an evolution of an idea. It was an accidental surprise thing. It's <laughs> sort of a surprise to us all. So, but then again, it, it has become, it's, you know, I'm not someone that has this master plan. Mm-hmm. I never have. And this um, sort of surprise thing, it has just become part of, I don't know if I was to really over plan everything, if I would lose something somehow. I mean, I keep doing it to myself. So it must be something (laughs) that I need to do, you know, stress myself out. To get that sort of like kick. Looseness or kick or something. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Well, I keep doing it. So it must be, you know, it must be part of what I need or what I think is important. The sort of like creative juices or totally yeah. yeah yeah making decisions f- very fast because yeah. it is boring it is boring when you overdo an idea when you overdo an idea I think you can you can feel it as well it's it, it does lose something yeah it stagnates yeah it's I think of, so yeah. so yeah I mean collaborations are a huge part of fashion now yeah is it how do you feel about that like in in the sort of wider sense I mean honestly I wouldn't have been able to survive without collaborations They've been they've been really important. I mean, a I'm a really collaborative person. I mm-hmm. love I love collaborations. I love working with different types of people. Um, on a business level, I wouldn't have been able to survive. You know, those early collaborations mm-hmm. just gave me the next the ability to just do the next step. Yeah, you know, you know it. It. I I mean, I think I think it's great. Particularly when you're working with someone that has a, you can, it helps you introduce something into your collection that you can't do yourself. You know, I can't, there were loads of things that, you know, when it was Napper, I couldn't really do, you know, proper outerwear. So, it, you know, I could exercise that with Napper, with, you know, uh, Nike. I've been able to do proper trainers and reach people that I wouldn't have been able to reach before. Yeah. With Clarks, I can do casual shoes and, you know, do you know what I mean? All of, all of those stuff, they, they allow you to, you know, a really good collaborators just to allow you the freedom actually mm-hmm. to do what you want to do. What was your first one? Do you remember? I'm trying to, uh, Caterpillar or Timberland. I was doing both and very close together. Yeah. 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 And that kind of like gave you a sort of taste for it. Yeah. Yeah. And also money. Yeah, I mean that's the you kind know what of... I mean. That's it. When, when, when you really don't have, you've got money from the bar <laughs> or the club that you're working in at night. It's not. It's not going to give you the the resources to. Yeah, exactly. So, like, a sort of designer starting out, it's a sort of lifeline. It was definitely a lifeline mm. to me, and I'm sure it's lifeline to a lot of um, young designers now. It's also the marketing power of that of that you just don't have it when you're a small yeah designer. yeah of course 
I mean, so you, I suppose the one that you're kind of most known for is that Nike shock. No, I know. <laughs> that Nike shocks. Um, I mean, and we've talked about this before, but like, yeah. were you surprised by how yeah. huge it became? I was a bit surprised. You know, mm -hmm. I'm always a bit surprised because I, I really don't design anything with a commercial head on. <laughs> <laughs> really for better or for worse yeah I just don't so um I'm always I'm always you know it was quite a directional shoe it's also a much loved shoe That's you know what I mean it's a actually, deeply it? loved yeah. shoe it's a you know symbolic for lots of people of 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 a particular time so um you know and you know sneakerheads don't really like too much mm. when you mess about with it but anyway so it was you know it was potentially it had all of the you know potential not to work <laughs> you know yeah it could have gone either way it could have gone either way <laughs> so uh yeah do you think that's why you picked it though as yeah, well yeah but of course that that is definitely why i picked it. that honestly that's why the things that you shouldn't touch or there's the sort of sake sanctity around it's not the right word or say sacred mm. thing around it yeah they're the ones that I want to go I want to go there because mm. it's also the reason that I was attracted to men's where it's the rules mm, of course yeah, yeah. The, it's, it's the, the same rules. it's the so it's the same you know pull mm. I have towards you're like oh okay let's see yeah what if is it still a shock if it's this much taller if it's backless if it is it you do you see what I mean yeah same with men's where is it still a trench if it's this big or this you, you know what I mean yeah I like the I like the rules to yeah play. and you're kind of like sort of morphing it in a certain yeah, exactly and you're pushing and it, you know you're challenging yourself as to like because there is a point where it's too far yes you know <laughs> there is a point when it's not so you so <laughs> it's there's the little dance yeah right before is there sort of like somewhere in the Martine Rose archives like a Frankenstein version of the shop yes <laughs> so many so, so many I, honestly yes and we're like no that's that will not work too far too far there guys <laughs> i mean the clarks is obviously another one isn't it because that's like you know it's such a classic brand yeah. it's got so much like yeah. interesting history yeah um, and wonderful Ex exactly and it's the same it's the same uh impulse that i have is to um is to sort of challenge myself and challenge clerks and challenge people to to look at this very classic, very, you know, uh, sort of nostalgic, sentimental, solid brand mm -hmm. in a in a new way and understand what I can do with it. What can I bring? How where can I take it? Yeah, I mean that's so that one's launching on the fifteenth, I think it is, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that I mean it's interesting how they've marketed it as well. Isn't yeah. it? It's kind of because I guess like there's lots of people that shop at Clark's that don't necessarily. No, yeah, no, have, exactly. They've yeah. got, they already have, you know, uh, Clark's Originals, yeah. which is, you know, it has a already a very strong image and a very strong market around mm -hmm. it. And then of course they've got the kids, yeah. Clarks, which is uh, most people in England, certainly first yeah. kids shoes go to Clark's and remember getting like your foot measured and yeah. all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then they have this enormous middle section that is like huge. Um, and it was it was that that section specifically that um, we wanted to work with because it was that section that just needed maybe a sort of a sort of energy, you know, like, like a different energy. Cause yeah. The, the other two. Are yeah. I mean, you said. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's. Um, you know you're only going to tweak it slightly I suppose aren't you exactly yeah. exactly no one wants a wallaby you know too different <laughs> do you know what I mean it's the same thing with like the shock thing like you have to be very careful yeah exactly are there any collaborations that you've turned down yes. or do you turn them down yeah yeah I do what would you what 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 is it about one that would be um I think like, it's one that doesn't really one that really doesn't make sense one that I think people are just going to be like, what, why, mm -hmm. what, you know, 
you know, you know what I mean? So one that I, I, I can't find the relationship between us or it doesn't feel, you know, it just doesn't feel authentic or it doesn't feel like I could actually do anything with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I suppose, uh, you know, as much as if it's a, if it's one that does work, the marketing push is really helpful. If it's one that doesn't, it, you know equally yeah, yeah you had there's an element of reputation damage absolutely yeah yeah exactly and I think and I think you know um people smell around it's like when I when I first started doing menswear and they'd be like what's your target market what's your target market and I'd be like okay I'll try and try and find this person that I'm supposed to be designing <laughs> for and then I'd design into that you know and it never worked because it was it was sort of fake yeah I didn't exactly feel it yeah and so other people didn't feel it so it just didn't work that's it isn't it it's the sort of like yeah yeah there needs to be some kind of relationship relationship yeah, yeah that's believable um the other well I suppose you call it a collaboration is um between you and Balenciaga mm -hmm. I mean how kind of important was that in your career that was enormous that was enormous. I mean, up until that point, it was still, and I've said this a few times, it was still really an expensive hobby. At that point, I'd just had my daughter as well. I'd been evicted. Oh my God. I was teaching. I was really like, I don't know. I don't really don't know how much more I can do this now. I've got this little person that I'm responsible for yeah. this is very irresponsible now to keep on doing this sort of vanity project like mm -hmm. before um and so I, I did tell them this and mm -hmm. up until that point our, our mutual friend had been um saying you know um a friend of mine Demna really likes what you do and you know blah 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 but it was so abstract so I didn't you know I didn't really know who he was and all of that sort of stuff um so then you know, when he emailed me and asked me to come over, it was just, it was just, it was just so brave of him. Cause I hadn't, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't come from a pedigree, you know what I mean? I hadn't been to houses and all, it was really just, a, it was a lot of trust mm. for him to put, the, could I could do the job? I mean, it's the first job I'd ever had. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I had no idea. Actually, I found a in my house clearing that oh, I was yeah. talking about. Found a diary, and it was the six months. It's absolutely crazy. It's the six months just before, three months before, and three months after Balenciaga. So I'm, I write in there. I'm so, I don't know if I can do this job. I don't know if I've got, you know, it. Well, all of the anxieties of having a daughter and all of that sort of stuff, and then getting the call from Demna then a little bit afterwards and it's so interesting oh. to look back because you remember it as a memory but when you when you've written it down I'm not an avid diary writer or anything but you you're back in that for the feelings I really talk about the feeling yeah that's and it, so interesting and it is it's quite it's quite interesting I only wrote it for that six months the rest of the diary's empty <laughs> I was too busy at that point um I was it was it was life-changing yeah it really was it was it was um mm. Also, we just got on so well. I think that was it. There was a there was a a real connection between us when we met. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so everything else was easy because the, there was we'd connected. And I mean, I suppose you say that like you didn't have any pedigree. I mean, I suppose he didn't have any pedigree really. Well, he'd been in houses. He'd, he'd, like, he'd done Margiela, he'd done, Virginia, Virginia, yeah. he'd done Viton, and he was a signer at Viton. And do you know what I mean? I don't. You know, he had. And he'd done that one, which yeah. blew up. Of course, yeah. Do you, do you, you know, so, you know, in terms of sort of like pedigree, sort of yeah. and pedigree, he had it. But do you think, what I mean is, do you think that he saw something in you that was sort of, so there was some kind of... Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and what do you think that you brought to him in, in the sense of like, you know... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know what I, I brought to him. You know, I, I feel that we had a really, it was a, it was a combination mm. of us together. It wasn't... We we laughed a lot. We we liked a lot of the same things. We had a lot of the same references, even though we came from completely different places. Yeah, you know, it was just it was a it was a uh, and it was it was an amazing period. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah, we built the team together, and 
you know, a lot of them are still there. It was just, it was just a very, it was a very exciting, very exciting time. It was really yeah. exciting for Balenciaga to have him, you know what I mean, at the helm. It yeah. felt like a real shift and to be a part of that and to sort of see it was, yeah, it was unbelievable. And then to have, to be able to have not only the money, but which ha- which helped me, but it, but also the visibility people, he was, it, it was all, they also, they did, I wasn't speaking under embargo, you know, it wasn't like you do this work, but you can't talk about mm-hmm. it. It's like, no, you're free to talk about it. So it was very generous, I felt. You yeah, know, yeah, that's I true. I could also tell people I was doing it and not get in trouble. Yeah. So, you know, people saw me in a different light. So it was, it was on lots of levels. It was very, it was a huge, it was like five years worth of graft in sort of one yeah, go. Yeah, it's great. So you, you, we spoke earlier about how it's now been nearly 17 years. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so what have been your kind of biggest learnings or, or your biggest kind of, um, what would you sort of tell a younger you? Um, um, I, I, do you know what, I, I used to be quite intimidated by fashion and a little bit ambivalent about it, which is why I worked for in clubs and bars for so long. Um, and it doesn't, you don't have to subscribe to a lot of the narrative around fashion. You just, there is another way mm-hmm. and no one is an, no one does it on their own. There are, and there's an enormous wealth of sort of, of supportive people that you can find and forge your language with. You know, I didn't do it on my own. I had loads of people that that I just connected with and we did little projects together mm. and, it, and it formed into something. So, you know, I just don't, don't swallow the narrative of, the, of this sort of like everyone's in competition with each other. It's not, there's space for everyone. And if you've got something to say, there is, there is room and support each other really because it's such a waste of time not to, you know, it's such a waste of energy and time. <laughs> So true. You know what I mean? And like, you know, when you're starting out, you don't, you need support. Mm. You need support. You need the support of other designers that are even doing the same thing as you. They're not your enemies. And you need the support of photographers and all of the whole industry around you. But find your little, mm. find your yeah. little team and, and grow with them. That's it. Like, don't, in my opinion, don't hop from one to the other. Like, find them and stick with them because, it, it you know, it it does pay off in the end and you grow together. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a really nice, because it's like a finding your little community. Finding your little community, yeah. yeah. And, you, you know, people that are more or less at the same level as you and more or less have the same vision and drive as you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, sort of. Do you think that's m- more of a, th- of a sort of um, culture within London fashion? Yeah. Definitely. I do, I do think we have a, a heritage of, sort of grassroots, you know, um, brand building here. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I do, you know, I do think for various reasons that we don't need to go into that has broken down. Um, but bring it back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are there any kind of um, like designers sort of on on the come up that you are particularly excited about or kind of um, could see something of yourself in or whatever? Oh, I'd like so many, so many, you know, um, Jawara, who's also one of the um, guests on this podcast. Yeah. I mean, amazing, you know, dynamic, creative, something to set point of view. Mm-hmm. There, but there, there genuinely are like so, so many, and it's really exciting to see there is, mm-hmm. and actually they sort of do, they do have this sort of collaborative spirit, I feel. I feel like it's a shift. I feel like things have shifted slightly. Mm-hmm. But um, to go back to that kind of like... yeah. I don't know, it's more like a generosity or something, isn't it? It's like a sort of yeah, two yeah. other's space. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Because I don't know, you just, that you feel like you, but you're pitted against each other so much. And I don't That's even have the press and the thing, whatever, but there's this thing that you're pitted against each other and they're really, it's, it's such, it's such, it's such bullshit. It just, you don't have to subscribe to that. Yeah, exactly. That's the biggest, nicest piece of advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs>